my game mm -hmm. away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do it, fellas. Let's do it, fellas. <laughs> through all that turnover, through all that adversity, the one thing that's main, 1,000% mm, for here certain. Here we go again. Height 6'9". Wow. Way 250. Yeah. Born to Gloria James in Akron, mm. Ohio on December 30th, 1984. Really? And that is the reason. Mm. No oh. matter how spectacular Kyrie is, he, and he's been spectacular, mm. as long as I got him, mm. I fear nothing. He was born in a manger? No, don't worry about it, Skip. She held him up because she knew he yeah. was going to be special. There's no room, at, other, no room at the end. That how night, many right? other people named you know mm. named LeBron? Mm. We know. I know a lot of Michaels. Mm. I know a lot of Irvings. Mm. I know Irving Robinson that grew up in my hometown. Mm. I know a lot of Kyries. Mm. I know a lot, a lot of people named Larry. Mm. How many LeBrons you know? Mm. How many sk You ready to make history? Come on now. Yeah. You know there's there's these two words. And when I say them, people get goosebumps because they, they know. They know what happens next. So without further ado. Free smoke. <laughs> Look. Scared cause I'm drowning in silence with bad thoughts These days I don't have nothing to say, man, the bag talks I put in headphones on my driver Pull up to the spot and give a good dick and good diver. I can't lie, I'm uninspired No more pillow talking about nonsense I only stick around to put some band-aids on my conscience I don't know why I feel so bad, nigga That's what we do, no foundation We don't build no more, we just screw Half a bottle of Henny, girl, I'm going with the wind The same nigga say they happy for me Ain't want me to win, so I'm done on my friends Don't need help popping Coronas And reminiscing, I just call up Big Bro J And say it's time for venting If I live forever, I hold this hate for some centuries You don't know how much I have you Doing what it meant to me, but motherfuck all that. I don't even know what the time to make the call back. Stupid low though. If they don't get the picture now, man, I crop them out of the photo. I can't relate to my peers. Been doing this shit for years. I'm motivated by fears. I took the wheel and I steer my sound. Not dictated by fuck boys in Atlanta. Stay gifted like this album was ghost written by Santa Boss forever. Like they decided to throw me under slammer. Every song's a hit like they pitching me underhand. As I could drop a million songs, but they never gonna understand this. Soapbox sermons for niggas. Never giving chances Fight our whole lives to get these weak ass advances Work twice as hard for the shit that they getting handed And this ain't even nothing we chose, nigga, we branded Still can't tell why y'all of these niggas mad at me I'm trying to get a hundred so I can put my team on salary Give it all to the art, man, I turn my life to a gallery uh, Man, damn, with a fucked up masterpiece 1100 shots and I swear, man, I felt them all If we ain't even good on our block, man, who can we call? pre decline state of mind, we broke crabs in the barrel Got us fighting our folk, man, this shit just a life of peril well, I tell you what, Dale, look, I give up, okay? When it comes down to Steph Curry, the light-skinned brother with the green eyes, I finally buy down to him, okay? He is him. Before, when we, to start this episode tonight, I couldn't get the words out of my mouth. I would like to encourage anybody who's listening to this, at whichever point in time you decide to listen to this, even if you decide to cut the video off, I'm saying this in the beginning so you don't miss it. Now, if you cut the video off before this message even, I mean, we only 20 seconds in, right? Come on. Well, obviously, we're more than 20 seconds because the intro and all that shit played. But either way, I, I, I know I say this a lot. I know I say it a lot, but I mean it. That's why I continuously say it. Chase your dreams. It does not pay to work for other people your entire life to work for other people's dreams it does not pay to sit around working nine to fives all the time chase a dream i'm telling you life is something else the last two days but really this month really has been a difficult month for me last couple months the last two years have been difficult you'd never probably know it based off of the fact that i get on here and try to bring you some type of entertainment and joy every day that i can but life is tough it really is. And to <clears throat> deal with the hard things that life throws at you, it only get worse and make it harder to deal with those things when you work in jobs that you hate. I understand you got to make ends meet. I, I understand that because I do, too. <clears throat> but I'm telling you, chase a dream.
It's okay to work these jobs until you can get to where you need to get to, to support you trying to get to those dreams. Chase a dream. It does not pay to quit on yourself. I promise you. Now, with that being said, I had to get that message out. Dre, what are you doing? Actually, first off, how's everybody doing today? I appreciate the interactions with the video. I appreciate the likes, subscriptions, the shares, all of that, the views. I really do appreciate y'all. Back to Draymond. Dre, what are we doing, my guy? Come on, man. Dre. You know, this is a difficult situation. Uh, well, it's not really a difficult situation. Draymond Green stepped on, well, stomped on uh, Demonis and Bonus in the uh, game two of the Warriors Kings matchup, if you didn't watch that. And Draymond Green, for the second time in his career, has been suspended from the playoffs and a meaningful game for the Warriors. And, you know, for the life of me, man, I love Dre. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I constantly support Dre. I constantly back Dre on here, but I do have a problem with this one. Not necessarily a problem as much as I'm not even mad. I'm disappointed because I hear so many people all the time say, oh, this is the heart and soul of the Warriors. You can't be the heart and soul of the Warriors doing some of the things that Dre done got away with. And while I done back Dre multiple times, it's a reason you ain't never heard me call him the heart and soul and the leader of this team. I consistently say that's Steph Curry. To me, to listen to the media say some of the stuff they say is just borderline dumb. Well, not borderline. It's completely dumb. Um, I don't know how Steph Curry is not the heart and soul of that team. That's insane to me. You take him off of the team and you say Draymond, the heart and soul, how many games are they winning? I mean, I just think it's crazy that the best player on the team wouldn't be. I understand if it's Kawhi. That's a completely different situation, though. Kawhi is not vocal. He don't really like talking that much. He's not really a vocal leader and all those other types. He not flamboyant like not flamboyant, but he not really boisterous. That's the word I was looking for. About fouls and all these other type of things. He's just a quiet dude. I have no problem with that. However, I understand if somebody was like, okay, the heart and soul of the team not really Kawhi. Even though Kawhi is the best player, he the engine to get it going. Like I get irritated when people say Draymond is the engine of the Warriors. He's not. That's still Steph. I do think that Dre is the second best player on the Warriors. I have never thought, probably for a season possibly, but I've not, I'm not one of those people who think Klay Thompson is better than Draymond Green. I, I can see Dre's value. I understand everything Dre do. I think Draymond Green is the second best, the second best player on the Warriors. And I understand him being the second best player on the Warriors wouldn't matter if you did not have Klay and Steph in the system that they are allowed to run and that they run. I get all that. However, Dre, you are the second best player on the team, in my opinion. You are one of the leaders of the team. You cannot continue to do things like this, my guy. And I get it. I had to go through anger management. It take a lot to piss me off. Now, it don't take a lot to piss me off. It take a lot for me to act on me being pissed off. You know what I'm saying? Through all the fighting trainings and all the, I, I'm going to just say from here on, I'm just call it MMA because I, I believe all type of fighting trainings can be grouped under mixed martial arts. And to be completely honest with you, except for like karate, but <laughs> except for like karate and, uh, and Krav Maga, bro, those is for the bitches. But listen, I had to do a whole bunch in my lifetime to get my anger under control because I understood that. You lose out on a lot of things. You mess up a lot of things. And you, you you really regret when you when you cannot control your anger. I promise you Dre regrets all these suspensions from the playoffs. I promise you he regret punching Jordan Poole. Like, I'm not one of those people who said that Dre punching Jordan Poole would fuck up the chemistry of the team. I think it's ridiculous that Jordan Poole getting punched could fuck up the chemistry of a team where he is, where he like the third or fourth best player on the team. That's insane to me. Can also considering the fact that Jordan Poole is so wishy. Listen, I love Kid Splash. And I told you, I would call him Kid Splash if he performed in the playoffs. This year has been some type of year. Because he done been bad to me in the season and in the playoffs. He too off and on. And I don't think that's his fault. I think he just don't know how to play with these dudes no more. And it's not even that he don't know how to do it no more. I think they were so good at finding ways to utilize Jordan Poole. The better he get, the harder it's going to be to keep him fit into a system. And people keep saying like, oh, well, you know, you got to get him ready for you. You trying to get Steph Curry. He, you know, he the bridge to step. No, he's not. 
He's not Steph Curry. And I just think it's insane that you would be trying to build another team to win a championship while you still have Steph Curry. I, I'm never going to agree with that with the Warriors. I just think that's hella disrespectful. But I can't be surprised. The Warriors done won so much. The money done got so high. I'm, I'm not a fan of them having to pay when they drafted a lot of the players that's on their teams. I'm not a fan of that. Dre, Steph, Clay, uh, what's my man's name? Jordan Poole, Kaminga. All those dudes was drafted by the Warriors. You shouldn't be punished for being able to draft good. But that's a conversation for a different day and a conversation I'm pretty sure I done had already on the channel. But I I, I personally don't care for uh, Jordan Poole right now in the sense that I just don't think that he will fit with this team long term. That's why I said they should have traded him last year. That's why I said in a video earlier this year they should have traded him. I just think when his value is as high as it is. See, for me, after Jordan Poole did what he did in the playoffs last year, I would have traded him immediately. Because a young superstar, well, I don't even think he's a superstar, like a young rising all-star on his own team might not lead to a lot of wins, but you can build around Jordan Poole so he can have his own team. I don't think it's, I don't know how great, Jordan Poole trying to play off of Steph and Clay is what he always going to be doing. He might have games where he the best scorer on the team at that moment, but he'll always be trying to play off of those two. The problem also a lot comes when you don't want to stunt Jordan Poole's growth by not wanting to let him go to trading him to another team. But by doing that, you do two things. You could possibly stunt his growth and you possibly hurt yourself in the long run, ultimately, by not getting max value for some of these dudes. Listen, I've been very consistent. The Warriors have a lot of young dudes that they should have been able to trade away to get a superstar over there to help Steph. Clay is no longer a star. I don't ever think that Clay was a superstar, but Clay is a very great number. I don't think Clay was ever the number two, except for when they won that first championship. But I don't think he was even the number two then. I think Andre, it just, it, 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 it switched off. The only consistent for the Warriors, to me, has always been Steph Curry. That is the consistent. That is the constant. That is the dude who you know. That's the cornerstone of your franchise. However, I don't think, and that's the only superstar that I think they ever had on since Steph been there, aside from Clay, uh, Draymond. I mean, um, Kevin Durant. And I just want people to know, while I was not happy that Clay was left off of that 75th anniversary team, like I said before, I would have put Dre on that team before I had to put Clay on that team, and I'm pretty sure Dre didn't make the team either. But when you just look, see what people do is look at the scoring of Clay. And I, I know he was a great defender back then, too. So when you look at those two things, you're like, oh, Clay obviously got to be better than Drake because he can score 40, 30 points. I, I I understand that. But if Clay had to be the guy by himself, I just don't think it'd be the same. I don't think Clay would be a bad player. I just don't. I think it helped Clay more than people realize to be able to play off of Steph and Dre. I don't think people realize that Clay can go out there and just jack up shots because he played with those two dudes. I don't think he could do that if he played for a lot of different teams. The majority of the teams in the NFL, in the NBA, I don't think Clay would be able to just run around jacking up shots like he is allowed to do now. And I'm not saying jack up shots in a bad way. Clay is a phenomenal shooter, one of the greatest shooters of all time, so he can do that. But I'm saying I don't think that I don't think that this thing play out the way y'all think it play out. If not for the fact they have Steph Curry, obviously, and Dre. But back to Dre. Dre, I'm disappointed, my man. I'm disappointed. You better than this. You're better than this. I, we can't keep walking around calling you a leader and all these different type of things. And I understand leaders have mistakes, but again, again, they lit the beam on your goofy ass because you did it. You missed the last eight minutes of a win, a very winnable game. Now you go down 0-2 at home and you back in at home and they don't have you for that third game. One of the biggest things that lets this offense, and, and I feel bad for Steve Kerr in a sense, because I think Steve Kerr is a great coach. I'm, I've been consistent with that. I've never been one of those people who hopped on that bad coach Steve Kerr thing. I think a lot of people believe Steve Kerr, they take shots to Steve Kerr for the simple reason, for one, he a white guy who don't talk too much. He only The only time I see Steve Kerr get fiery, fiery and vocal is when it's social issues, gun problems, and shooting up schools and shit. Like, that's when his passion really come out. And so I, one of the things I think that has been unfair to Steve Kerr is that people always say, well, he only took Mark Jackson's team and won with him. No, he didn't. 
Mark Jackson had the same players and couldn't win a championship. Not to mention, and I know some people go, well, he didn't have Kevin Durant. I don't care about that, bro. The fact of the matter is, if you think, and this is weird to me, that y'all won't just go look at Mark Jackson's Warriors and look at Steve Kerr's Warriors. They are not the same Warrior teams. Like, I hear people all the time say, well, Mark Jackson said this is the best shooting backcourt in the NBA. It's cool that he said that. But just because he said that don't mean we got to rewrite history. He is not the reason the Warriors are this good. It's just not true. Yes, his defense, what he did for them defensively, I cannot, I cannot, let me put it like this. He is not the reason they are champions multiple times over. To continuously give Mark Jackson that credit to me is ridiculous and shun Steve Kerr and shit on Steve Kerr with everything he do. It's just absolutely ridiculous to me. That's why I say, bro, people who play back in the day, coach back in the day, y'all just got it good because you never had to face this type of social media buffoonery that players and uh, coaches have to deal with today. But I, I think Steve Kerr is a phenomenal head coach. I just don't. I feel bad because if I'm Steve Kerr, what the fuck do you do with Draymond Green? Like, it's nothing you can really tell this dude. It's not like I I didn't believe that the Warriors would ever consider letting Dre walk. I now truly believe that they would consider it and they would try to sit down and have a conversation with Steph about it because they would probably start off with, bro, this dude done cost us two times in the playoffs by suspension. He punching teammates, bro. Like when he get on one, when his emotions start to flare, it's nothing literally anybody can do. He is going to do whatever like. Nobody can calm him down. And one of the worst things of a leader, which is why I don't understand why people consistently call him the heart and soul and the, the, the leader of the team. If a leader can calm everybody else down when they fiery, but nobody can calm him down when he fiery, that's a weird leader to have. Like, I can't have my leader. And I've been in this situation before where the leader of I done been in groups or I done been on a team where the leader was the most ignorant motherfucker on the team. And I'm not calling Dre this. But he was the most unstable, emotion, emotionally unstable person we had. And every time something little happened, he flipped off the switch. But like you just knew he was going to lose his fucking mind anytime anything flipped and uh, went sideways for him. And so one of the biggest reasons um, I think that, you know, they could possibly get rid of Dre is because of that. Because at some point in time. You just get tired of dealing with that. I, I'm going to be honest with you. If it was me, I had to make a strong consideration and thoughts about it. Now, ultimately, like, like I said, unlike the sports media that we listen to a lot, I'm going to tell you when I'm biased. I'm not going to just make you think that I'm, you know, I'm not going to try to manipulate the topic and all these different type of things. Um, I'm biased. I love Draymond Green. However, you know, once I get Pat, it'd be hard to let him go because of these championships. And if he still got something left in the tank, listen. Like Mike Tomlin say, we don't treat everybody, we treat everybody fair, not equal. You do what you allow, what you can afford to do. The fact of the matter is Draymond Green can afford to be this fiery. It's just as simple as that. I know people hate Draymond Green. I'm not condoning what Draymond, uh, stepping on players, kicking players in the balls. I'm not, I'm not condoning none of that. And to be quite frank with you, the only one that I would ever argue with you about is when lebron stepped over him because it ain't no way in hell you finna put your nutsack over my head when you could have walked around me or something like that and think i'm not finna swipe off at you like bro we will be right there having to get broken up bro it's no lebron wouldn't even made it over me bro i would have lifted him up and tried to toss him bro like it ain't no way you finna step over me like a like a child bro like i think that's hella disrespectful if you stepped over put your nuts on a child's head when you stepping over him that's disrespectful so you never gonna convince me that he should have been suspended for that i think it's absolutely ridiculous adam silver suspended him for that but you gotta remember i'm not a fan of adam silver everybody keep acting like adam silver the greatest gm of all time or the greatest uh commissioner of all time no he's not People keep saying, oh, you know, he a player's uh, commissioner. How? He let fans get away with buffoonery a lot. And it's just hard for me to believe that David Stern would allow some of these fans and the environment that these fans done created of madness to just let this shit fly. Adam Silver let a lot of shit fly with uh, fans. He constantly going at players. I ain't going to never forget him doing that bullshit to Kyrie. Like, y'all can love Adam Silver all you want to. Y'all seem to love white dudes who seem to be nice. 
And I know people are like, oh, Saint, you're racist, you're racist, you're racist. I'm just telling you the truth. It's just like all these dumbass black athletes see a white girl to say something nice to him and he want to put a ring on. I'm just telling you what I see. Adam Silver is overrated. To suspend Draymond that first time was ignorant. To suspend him this time to me is ignorant. However, I can't really get mad at it because I get it. What do you do <laughs> with Draymond at this point? Like, it's just nothing you can do. I could sit here and tell you, oh, he should be suspended. Oh, it makes it. At the end of the day, I can't really get mad at nothing these dudes decide to do with Dray. Because at the end of the day, what the fuck do you do with Draymond at this point, man? I mean, what do you do? So I'm not mad at Adam Silver. I don't think he's a great uh, commissioner and all this crap that y'all make him out to be. But I can't be mad at him. I can't be mad at Kerr. I can't be mad at the world. Like, listen, I'm never going to be a fan of suspending a player in the game um, in a playoff series unless they do something just absolutely outrageous, like legitimately is fighting on the court. Draymond Green stepping on dude, you could have said that that was uh, just how he came down or this and that. Like, you you. I, you could have fined him in anything, bro. I, I just don't agree with it. It's just the same way Adam Silver won't come out and speak on these dumbass offensive fouls when a player get fouled, but he hit the other player who fouled him with his elbow on accident while he making a move. Then they get called for the flagrant. How, in what world does that make sense? Like this, this. <laughs> hey, people be talking about how the NFL done got soft. I never realized it until just now. I don't watch the NBA as much as I used to because the NBA done got soft. And I don't really mean it as soft and like, oh, they too friendly and things. I don't care about that. Um, my problem is what they allowing refs to get away with. What they, uh, uh, they, how can you not police referees? It's my same problem with the cops. Cops can just go out and do whatever the fuck they want to. They the most corrupt organization in the world. But you need them. So they allowed to get away with it. That's why so many members of the cool clubs clan. It's cops. That's why so many members of uh the good old boys is cops, sheriffs, detectives, lawmakers. Not shocked by that. That's why I try to stay clean. That's why I try not to get in trouble with the law. I got in trouble with the law one time, not on nothing crazy, but I got involved with the law and I see how, you know, difficult the law can be to deal with. I understand. Listen, there's going to be some white people who don't want to hear this. And that's okay. You're white. You never grew up black, so you didn't have to experience this, even if you saw a friend go through it. So you could turn this off right now if you're somebody who don't like to listen to black problems, uh, or you could just keep listening. It's up to you. I know what it's like when cops and people of authority look at you and say, oh, this is an angry black man, and try to say all the problems that you have in life is why you mad and it's, it's making you this way and Whatever you did, you got to be guilty of it because you're just an angry black man. I know what it's like when a white cop just straight up see you as a black dude. Before they see you as a human, they see you as a black dude. I know what it's like to be followed around in a store. I know what it's like to be pulled over by a cop who didn't have to pull you over, but you're black and you fit his quo. I understand all of this. I done been uh, harassed by cops. I done had racism uh, towards me by cops. I done dealt with all this. How do you police it? You can't. They get to police themselves. Just like referees. Referees fuck up games left and right. Can't do shit about it. Because if you say something about it, you get fined. You bring up cop corruption or something like this, then not only do you get that, you know, mad group of white people coming down your throat, but then you also have to deal with the cop corruption after that. Listen, if you're somebody who don't believe cop corruption exists, I pray you never have to experience it and realize that it do exist. OK, I hope you can live in that bubble your entire life and believe that cop corruption is not a thing, that the only people that's bad in this world is everybody but the cops. You know, so good luck with that. But <sighs> Dre, we got to do better, man. It feel like a lost cause uh, saying this because I just really think this could have affected him being with the team long term. Um, but. You know, all good things must come to an end at some point in time. To be completely honest with you, as much as I love Dre and Clay, Dre and Clay staying with Steph ain't really. Me not wanting them two to leave is not because of how great they are, particularly, as much as I like them. Um, more so with 
why would you get rid of either of those two if you don't have an immediate plan to bring in somebody better than both of them and that can guarantee you success right now? Because if it's just money that's the problem, why would you keep Jordan Poole? Why would you have ever given that contract when Clay and Dre done proven to you that they can get it done? And I understand Clay coming off of those injuries, and that's hella unfortunate. However, Clay was good this year. And it's no way that you can't get Clay. If Clay wouldn't want to take something less than a max, fine. I understand you got to let him go. First off, if Clay can get a max from somewhere, Clay better go get that max. <laughs> Straight up. But if Clay cannot go get a max from another team, then I don't know why Clay would leave this team on a good deal. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate. I want Dre to remain a warrior. I want him to retire a warrior. But I understand if this was like one of the last straws for Draymond Green. I understand if they'd said like, "Yo, bro, we done had a lot of last straw." Yeah, I get all of it, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna fight it. It's just very unfortunate. You wish, uh, I really still, I'm not gonna never agree with the suspension, even though, like I said, I won't argue it because what do you do with Dre at this point? But I mean, damn, you just wish Dre could learn to control his emotions. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just wish, you know, I'm not going to get on here like Nick Wright and just start shitting on players. You know, it's interesting to me when I listen to some of these dudes get on TV and go so hard at players. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that that's that's when I think to myself, like, because th this is why. If I were, uh, let's say they meet Draymond in person. They would not speak to him with that same level of bravery that they speak to him knowing that they ain't got to see him. It's just not going to happen. I do not believe Skip would be so blatantly disrespectful in his face or Westbrook's face. I know Nick Wright wouldn't be that disrespectful. in his. See, Skip kind of crazy, so Skip might. Nick Wright's not crazy. He's not stupid. He know for a fact he would not get in front of those dudes' face and go crazy like it. For one, I don't even know how Nick come up with so much bravado all the time. I don't even know how y'all still listen to this dude, to be completely honest with you. To me, he is unlistenable. You should not be listening to somebody as blatantly biased as Nick Wright, but refuse to tell you that he blatantly biased. It's, 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 it's insane to me. Yeah, you can't make the shit up. With that being said, I appreciate you for joining me on another episode of Kicking With Saint. Tell somebody you love them. Chase a dream. Tell somebody you fuck with them. Chase a dream. You could be anything in the world. Choose to be kind to somebody today and choose to chase a dream. Sign out. I got the moves like hot sauce. Lil mama taking the top off. I'm laying down getting topped off. After this, she know she getting knocked off. I know she loving the money, so I keep on thumbing and thumbing. She says she horny when she's taking shots, so I keep them coming and coming. Now I'm putting dick in the tummy. Scoop her up like I'm raking the sums. You would think shawty red track, the way that she running and running. You getting dumber and dumber, you out here chasing the bone. After she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> Tight. Tight.